What's up, guys? Mike here, head trader, True Trading Group, May 9th. Uh, with this video, I'm going to talk to you about the importance and understanding volume profile on certain chart patterns. It's not enough to just recognize a bull flag or to recognize a head and shoulders or something like that. You also have to understand the volume profile for that pattern and when volume should be increasing, when volume should be decreasing. And your understanding of this concept will help you either hold on to a position longer because you think the stock is going to push and give you continuation or get you out of a trade quicker, maybe before your stop loss triggers, when you recognize a sign of weakness. That is exactly what happened today in DCIX and SHLD, two stocks that I traded today, profitable in both of them. Both of, neither one of them gave us follow through. So I'm going to go over with you today, understanding volume profile in a bull flag setup and understanding volume profile in a pattern that I call the double bottom gap up. Okay. To start things off, let's go to DCIX, my first trade of the day. And we'll talk about this double bottom gap up. I love double bottom gap ups guys. Oh, excuse me. So I love double bottom gap ups. So what is a double bottom gap up? Let's do that. Do that first. Double bottom gap up occurs, guys, when a stock obviously gaps up and then pushes higher right off the open. You need to push higher right off the open because in order for the double bottom gap up to, to form, you have to see a drastic pullback down to retest the low of the day. Okay, this pullback is going to get longs dis or uninterested in the stock and it's going to get shorts into the stock. But once that initial morning low from that gap up holds and it does not break. So you get a bit of a squeeze type action above VWAP. Okay. So the trigger on this trade, excuse me, trigger on this trade is a high volume break above VWAP. You see, we got an increase in volume here when DCIX broke above VWAP. I got long DCIX right here in this candle on the high volume break above VWAP. Take it to my trade announcements. Here we are. Um, oh guys, I sold out, um, if you watch my earlier videos, I was long APRN for a swing trade from Friday. I sold the last piece that I was holding in APRN today, sold some yesterday at $2.85 for an 18% gain, and then sold out the rest today at $2.50. Um, so here we are at $9.59, long DCIX at $2.89, stop loss at $2.65, so slightly below that VWAP. So long at $2.89. Let's go back to the chart. Here we are, guys, long at, at $2.89. Now, ideally on the double bottom gap up, once you break through VWAP, you should not get back below it. So you get a pullback here and here to test that VWAP. You see VWAP now acting as an area of support. And then we started to push. Okay. I took some profit off right in front of the high of the day. I usually always do. I usually sell about 25% of my position in front of the high, just in case the high does not break. Back to my trade announcements here. You guys see I took some profit off at 315, still holding some. Okay, that was five minutes after my entry. Took some off at 315, still holding some. Back to the chart. Now comes the volume profile, understanding volume profile on a double bottom gap up. Once you get that high volume break above VWAP and then VWAP holds support and the stock starts to push higher, that is when you need to see volume increase. You need to see volume doing this. That is when you will get confirmation that the stock is going to break the high of the day and continue. You need to see this type of volume. Okay. This is what you want to see on a double bottom gap up. Okay. After you get that breakthrough VWAP, then you get up to the high of the day. That kind of volume is going to be your indication. The high of the day is going to break and we're going to extend. Then you can hold on to the bulk of your position and look for that extension. But what happened to DCIX after we got back above VWAP, Look what happened here. Volume started decreasing. That is the exact opposite of the volume profile that you want to see when a stock gives you this pattern. Okay. So once I noticed that volume was decreasing at a point in the pattern, that volume is supposed to be increasing. I lightened up my position and I took more off right here at 10 18. So 19 minutes after my entry, I took more profit at $2.90. Now, 
it's only a one cent profit, but that is not the point of this trade. Or, I mean, obviously the point of the trades to make profit, but it's not the point of this lesson. The point of this lesson is understanding that recognizing and understanding that this is not the volume profile you want to see on a double bottom gap up pattern allowed me to exit the bulk of my position right here at 290, basically break even on where I entered the stock and saved me a lot of money from waiting for my stop loss to trigger down here. And recognizing that that decrease in volume and saying that's not the volume profile that we're supposed to see on a double bottom gap up saved me a lot of money. And that's the point. Okay. It's understanding the volume profile within this pattern that caused me to exit the bulk of my position there at 290. I was holding on to just a small piece left and I sold out of the remaining DCX at 274. So I took uh, a small loss on the rest of that position and I walked away from this trade profitable. Okay, it wasn't big, it wasn't a huge profit, but nonetheless, I still walked away net positive on the trade, all right? And it's because of recognizing that volume profile, okay? And understanding in a double bottom gap up, once you break above VWAP and then VWAP holds and you push, you need to see volume increase. If you don't, if you see volume decreasing, that's an early sign of weakness get ready to bail, maybe lighten up your position or move your stop loss up because that's an early sign of weakness. And sure enough, guys, as I pan over, you can see DCIX just fell apart later in the day. Never got back up there to test the high and rolled over later in the day. Okay, and it all comes down to understanding the volume profile for that pattern. Now, SHLD. My second trade of the day. This is going to be a lesson about understanding volume profile on a bull flag. Okay. I started looking at SHLD after they put news out today um, in the morning. They put out some news and that was a catalyst for the stock, sent the shooting higher, big surge in volume came into the stock, and then we started to consolidate. So what I did was I took my Fibonacci level. Okay. And I noticed that the 382 Fibonacci level was lining up perfectly here with VWAP. Okay, it's beautiful, very nice. Then I started to notice, look at this, we have a nice little um, bull flag, bull pennant type of pattern forming. Okay, there it is. There's your bull flag. Okay, so once I saw this, I liked the fact that we have the 382 and VWAP directly below, kind of holding together this bull flag pattern. Okay, so first part of this lesson is, you know, when you get a pattern like that, a bullish pattern holding above multiple support levels like that, it's a good sign. Okay, you kind of touched upon that on my previous videos. Um, when I was talking about, um, you know, patterns forming above previous resistance levels on the daily chart. This is a similar concept. When you're seeing a bullish pattern form above multiple support levels, that's a good sign. Okay, so I went ahead and I jumped in SHLD long at $3.17, stop loss at 3.07, risking 10 cents on the trade. Okay, back to the chart. Here is my entry, guys, right in here. Okay, there's where I got long um, SHLD. Okay, now, volume profile. A bull flag. The volume profile that you should see on a bull flag pattern is real heavy volume as a stock pushes higher initially and creates the flag pull on the pattern. This is the pull. Okay. You then want to see decreasing volume as the flag is created and you get a moment of consolidation. That's a bull flag. Then once you break out of that flag pattern, is when you need to start seeing strong volume come back into the stock, similar to the volume that you see on the flagpole. Okay. We did not get that on SHLD. Okay. We got a slight increase. Okay. Slight increase, but look at how the volume just, just it, look, it just died right back out. Just died out. The volume wasn't there. Not to mention we were heading into lunchtime. 
So I was quick to take profits on this trade because the volume never came. And I was talking to all of our members in chat that were everyone that was in this trade. And I said, guys, keep your eyes on the volume. That's going to be your indication that we're going to break through the high of the day and we're going to push. But be wary. We're heading into lunchtime. OK, it's 1215. So on top of the volume really not being there, the volume profile that you want to see on a bull flag breakout, which which would have been volume like this, guys. This is the type of volume that we would have liked to have seen on SHLD. OK, this would have been an indication that we're going to push and we're going to break through the high of the day. But we didn't get that type of volume. OK, we got this. And then it very quickly just died out very, very quickly. OK, and that is why I take it to my trade announcements. I took profits quickly. OK, I took profits off at 332. And then we got up to right near the high of the day and I sold the bulk of my position at 342 at 1220. So I sold the bulk of my position right here at 342, right in front of the high of the day, okay? Because I was not sold that the high of the day was going to break, okay? It was lunchtime. This is 12.15. I'm sorry, this is 12.20, okay? So we're right in the, into that lunchtime session, and the volume just wasn't there. So that's why I sold the bulk of my position when I did. And then you can see we never got going again. We never got going again. That volume never came in and we were never able to retest the highs and break and give us continuation. So we ended up failing that bull flag breakout, just like DCIX failed that double bottom gap up breakout. And it was my ability to, to recognize and understand the volume profile that we should see on a double, on a double bottom gap up the volume profile we should see on a bull flag breakout. And being able to look at it and say, we're not getting that type of volume profile. And that allowed me to exit both of these trades when I did and walk away from both trades profitable. Okay. When both trades did not give us follow through and did not give us continuation. And that's what this lesson is all about. Okay. It's understanding certain, certain chart patterns and that when you should get an increase in volume within that pattern and when you should get a decrease in volume within that pattern because there's very specific moments throughout the formation and breakout of a pattern that volume should go up and should go down okay and understanding that could be very key in your ability to hold on to a position longer and catch a bigger winner okay as the stock extends and pushes further or Recognize weakness and exit the trade before it ends up failing. That's what you should take away from this video. Good stuff today, guys. I'll see you in chat tomorrow, and we'll do it all over again. Take care.